I live in Prospect Heights, and the public school down the street from me, PS9, recently lost their Title I funding, about $350,000. Now our community's demographics are changing, but we're not rich yet. We can't raise the money to offset that loss. That's a lot of bake sales. So what are you going to do for us and other schools like ours in the same situation? Well, I'm going to make sure that every school in the city will be adequately funded. Um, I, uh, as you know, I, was, I taught for 11 years, so education is, will be one of my top priorities. As I mentioned before, um, knowing what we, know now, what we know now about the impact poverty has on the, on the development of children, uh, it's political malpractice not to address this. When I talk to parents in Bedford Stives in the Sunset Park, uh, they know that IQ is not the issue, but it, it's poverty. And uh, I'd like to establish these pediatric wellness centers in, uh, in uh, low-income communities in the city where doctors, teachers, and uh, parents work together. So when these young people, this is, we, all, we all support pre-K. We all support full-day kindergarten. But I'm talking about before that. I'm, I'm talking about the first years of a child's life. And uh, the Harlem Children's <coughs> Zone has a great program, and they've proven it's successful. These youngsters are, are winding up in special education, and they're winding up in our criminal justice system because we're not doing enough. Children are, are not a priority. Your school should be adequately funded. I'll make sure that it is when I'm mayor. You know, the question of <coughs> Title I funding and the fact that it isn't uh, implemented in a way that recognizes the complexity of what's happening at the school in your neighborhood. And I've seen that all across the city. It is an example, yet another example, of how the federal government doesn't understand cities. And we need to make sure the next mayor is the champion for urban America, working with our congressional delegations and senators in Washington. And make sure they, that Washington finally understands the issues just like what you were saying about Title I, and that we get changes that really embrace the realities of urban America. And I don't just make that to you as a promise. We've delivered already in those ways on a local level in the council. There was a proposal a year or so ago to change Beacon School funding, to make it only exclusively about uh, overall zip code income. Forgetting that there were neighborhoods that have pockets of low income people, even though the overall income in a neighborhood would be fine. Those neighborhoods would have lost their beacon schools. We went back, we forced change at the Department of Youth and Community Development to have a more granular, specific funding level and save those beacons that are needed in gentrifying neighborhoods just as much as anywhere else. That's what we have to do for Title I. By definition, Title I funding is for schools with populate, uh, student populations that have extra needs. To the extent that there are schools that are close to that threshold but have not exceeded that threshold and need some additional help, the city should come up with some funding so that it's not such a cliff-style either-or type of situation. Uh, but I think it's, it's not just about Title I funding because that still is a relatively small amount of the school's overall budget. We need to get more funding into the classrooms, into the schools, and we can start by getting rid of this ridiculous co-location system and system of school closings that have wasted tons and tons of money that have not added educational choice and instead has just been an expensive shell game playing with the lives of our children. We also have to take a look at these expensive consultants that, that that purport to create these beautiful new systems that will revolutionize education in the city of New York. And at the end of the day, after the expenditures of tens of millions of dollars with these consultants, nobody uses them. First, the city of New York, where Title I changes, where those Title I dollars are lost, the city of New York should look at its formula and should use additional dollars to fill the gap. It is as simple as that, particularly in so many neighborhoods like Prospect Heights and others that are changing. That are changing, but at the same point, looking at the students who are in those schools, they still need the support. So number one, New York City needs to start to look at its formula and use additional dollars to be able to fill that gap, number one. But second, we are, this city, and under the Bloomberg administration, they have outsourced tens of millions of dollars that have gone out of this system, that have gone into the hands of, it's not just, whether it's networks or outside private companies, most of whom aren't in the city of New York, 
They've outsourced our dollars. We need to bring those dollars back in-house again and start to use it for our children instead of driving and providing and putting money in the pockets of these corporations. So we just need to bring money back in-house. It's a system with $23 billion. And they're taking our money and sending it elsewhere. Let's bring it back here again. You know, as a council member for eight years from Brownstone, Brooklyn, and a school board member, a member for three years before that, I, I learned very, very clearly uh, and when the Bloomberg administration came in and the Tweed building became the center of the universe, the Tweed building doesn't understand neighborhood schools, doesn't listen to parents, and doesn't make the kind of adjustments that would be obvious there to provide support when that uh, money's taken away. You can't pull the rug out from underneath a neighborhood school. I agree with John, the co-locations, the closures, what's worse about them is not only the, the waste of resources, but what it says to people who love their community school. It says you don't matter anymore, and that's wrong, and we can't accept that. And finally, finally, the best way to help schools through all of these changes is to invest in early childhood education and after school, and I propose, I'm the only person on this panel who has proposed a way to do it, taxing New Yorkers who make a half million or more so we can finally invest in our children at the level they deserve. Thank you.